do, because he does. And, and we're going to talk about it from the Word of God today. And the first point that I want to bring to you before we, while well, I do, if you take your Bible to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, why don't you stand with me right now? And we'll, we'll be that in honor of the Word of God. We'll be that great passage in just a moment while you're turning.
those who got sins on his errands shall not go without instructions. God gives us the instructions and the direction that we need. That, that I love, I, I'm a big Billy Graham fan. I think most of you probably know that. At one time he was offered tens of millions of dollars that he would build a college. He prayed about it and he turned the money down because he knew it was not his assignment. Very practical and important lesson for you and I. We need to know exactly what our assignment is and stay focused on that. Amen. Amen. So this is this is where uh, if you'll allow me just for fun. This is where when some, somebody from the church calls and says, hey, would you help us with this or that? There, <laughs> there are times when, when you can say, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm working on my son from God. But there are also those times when you, when you need to say, yes, I'll be right there. You have 
views is that pastors and missionaries and TV evangelists are the only ones doing ministry. Not only is that a lie or an excuse, friends, it's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that all of us are to present ourselves as living sacrifices. Amen? Amen. <laughs> this word for God that we're focusing on today from Romans 12 is for all of us. Another, another last filter is that God tried to send people into education, law, medicine, business, art, science, media, and yes, even politics. Yes. And we told them they had to go to Bible college and become a preacher. Let that sink in for just a moment. Yes, you know, our Bible colleges are trained a lot of great mighty men and women of God that are filling places of ministry and all kind and all those that I listed in and everything else. But not everybody is supposed to go to Bible
serving and influencing people that come to Jesus in pagan cultures. I'm going to give you, I want to give you two Old Testament names, and, and I want to encourage you to study these. First, her name is Esther. Oh, and if you haven't read the book of Esther lately, please go home this afternoon and read the book of Esther. Study the life of Hadassah, Esther. And and become a mighty woman of God like Esther. I want to give you another one. His name was Daniel. <laughs> Sometimes we can't hardly even say his name without adding in the lion's den. <laughs> the word for the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. Yeah. Oh, you guys. If you haven't read the book of Daniel, you go on and read the book of Daniel. There's a, there's, the last half of it or more is, is prophecy about coming things, but the first half is about the life and testimony of the wonderful Daniel. They didn't listen to the voice of God through any filter. They listened to the pure voice of God. The fifth thing that I want to talk to you about is the secret to finding your assignment is in your heart. For instance, finding your assignment in the will of God and the purpose of Jesus is not difficult. It is very, very easy. God speaks to your heart. The Holy Spirit will speak to you. And you will hear it like, like sometimes like your own voice, like your conscience. But there is the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you and, and guiding you and revealing things to you. And then in order to hear the voice of God, your heart has to speak to your mind and say, no, no, no don't, don't, don't throw this out the window. You just need to listen. Respond to what God is saying. Are you with me? Yeah. You have to reject the thoughts of, of thinking that it's about us, ladies and gentlemen. Because it's all about, like Daniel and Esther, boy, those are, those are lives of brokenness. Assignment and instruction and stood up to declare truth and righteousness to a pagan generation. They are wonderful examples for us. The Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, will require that everything in our instructions and in our assignment comes through relationship. Relationship with Him. You see, uh, Christianity has always been and always been Are, we are part of the family of God, and, and He speaks to us and reveals things to us. So, friends, it's really easy for us to get to know our assignments. Sometimes it's so simple we miss it. Here's, here's, here's how it goes. God gives you a desire. God gives you a longing to do something for Him, and He begins to intensify that. In your heart, you you feel like a natural tendency to go do something for God. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you, and the Lord will confirm that and will intensify that as you go along. He knows that you are doing what He has put as a love in your heart and in your life. He knows that you will endure whatever pain is is. Or required or involved. He knows you will learn and grow and sharpen your skills for that thing that is the love of your heart. And the, the test, or one of the tests of it is when you think about your assignment and you measure the cost, you want to do it anyway. Even though, you know, obviously, uh, first into a new assignment, we may not know all the costs, but, but when we start to think about it, and start to realize it, and start to feel it, and experience it, and it doesn't matter to us, that means it is our assignment. That is a confirmation that it is our assignment. Let me give you a, a beautiful and, and wonderful example. Hannah was the mother of sin. She wanted children. In fact, so why did God close her womb? The Bible tells us that He did. 
First Samuel 1 5. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion. But he there is Hannah's husband. For he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. God wasn't being cruel to Hannah, he was intensifying her love for children. He's preparing us for the next step. We are, we are either, we are always in preparation for what God has for us next. And that's what was happening in Hannah's life. She was going to give up her firstborn to be the first prophet of Israel. God knew that Hannah, can I say it this way? Samuel was going to come through Hannah's womb. And so he, he allowed that womb to be closed until it was the right time. Until Hannah was ready. Until Hannah's husband was ready. Maybe even we could even expand it out and say until Israel was ready. And then comes even more reward. She gets to birth that Sons and two daughters. Uh, 
in my calculation, that's quiverful, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> God filled her quiver. Hallelujah. With a bunch of kids. <laughs> Goes on to say, meanwhile, the child Samuel grew for the Lord. Let me say it to you another way. Find the love of your heart. Find their, find God's will for their lives. Get off the drugs 
and get off the mental illness and, and get the help that they need to get a job. So thank you, Holy Spirit, for that sweet spending that you just gave them. Amen. God loves the city. We, we see over and over in the Bible the stories of our heroes who change instruction 